Greetings, adventurers, and welcome back to the Den of the Drake. Other dragons hoard gold while I hoard internet cringe. Okay, okay, I think at this point we know that inarguably the best class in D&D is the Paladin. Yes, us Chad Paladin players spend most of our time lifting weights, driving fast cars, and seducing your mom. Oh, and who can forget drinking the sweet, salty tears of those who main other classes? Den of the Drake does not condone the bullying of other D&D classes. Yes, it is incredibly funny, but we still need the wizard to cast haste on us. You want roleplay? The paladins got it. Combat effectiveness? Pfft, did someone say smite? Exploration? Homie, I knew that your big bad evil guy was a vampire from literally level one. But it appears that our superiority has led to some controversy. Yes, my brothers and sisters in holy arms, we must hang our heads in shame. For our most noble of classes attracts quite possibly the largest number of reprobates out of all the classes that Dungeons and Dragons has to offer. And that's saying something because rogue is still a thing. The saga I have for you today stars one of these blights upon the face of God's chosen class, who returns again and again to terrorize his party with shenanigans that prove that just because you say your character is lawful good doesn't mean that you are lawful good. Now, without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right into the horrifying world of r slash RPG horror stories. Enjoy. Part 1 is titled, The Short But Horribly Annoying Life of Aladdin the Paladin. Dramatis Personae. DM, a talented but inexperienced DM. His only flaw might be his leniency towards problem players. Me, playing a half-elf druid. Sorcerer, mostly just an unfortunate bystander to what will unfold. Aladdin the Paladin, very creatively named human paladin. Please take a guess whether he'll be a problem down the line. Monk, the poor guy who's going to suffer the most. At one point in the story, he'll literally throw his PHB at Aladdin. Please hold back on judging him too harshly until you read further. Nobody got hurt, at least out of game. Now, without further introduction, I'll let the words and deeds of Aladdin the Paladin speak for themselves. Our level one characters meet at a wizard's tower. The old mage needs some help with busy work and is hiring adventurers, promising gold as a reward. Me. Looks like we're going to work together on this. I'm Darinius of the Silver Forest. Pleasure to meet you. Aladdin the Paladin. I'm Aladdin the Paladin. I am a force of the law. Monk. Wow, what a name. I'm... Aladdin the Paladin angrily interrupting the monk. Yes, that's my name, okay? I'm Aladdin the Paladin. He looks like he's thinking hard for a moment before he continues. My parents were bards. They liked rhyming. Monk. Okay, so they knew you'd become a paladin when they named you. Aladdin the Paladin. Well, yes, okay? They gave me away to a paladin order when I was little. That, by the way, is literally everything we're going to learn about Aladdin's backstory during the rest of this campaign. I'm sure he was a well-fleshed-out character. Me. No need to get agitated over simple introductions. Let's go ahead and see what our wizard host needs from us. And so we went on our first quest, fetching some magical ingredients from an abandoned mine which, of course, was infested by some low-level monsters. Everything went fine. We looted some gemstones and leveled up. Together with the wizard's pay, we had earned ourselves 1,500 gold pieces. Aladdin the Paladin. Give me the money. I want to buy plate armor. Monk. No, we're splitting it up evenly. Everyone gets their fair share. Aladdin the Paladin. What do you even need that money for? You're a monk. You don't use weapons or armor. And the druid can't use metal items. And the sorcerer doesn't have to pay for new spells. So I'm the only one with a proper use of this money. Monk. 
We've known each other for three days now. There's no way I pay for your armor while I get nothing out of it. Me. Let's all calm down. I don't have much need for material wealth right now, so I'll go ahead and lend you my share, Aladdin. If you want to save up for better armor to protect all of us, you can just pay it back later. Aladdin the Paladin. No, I'm not borrowing money. Money lending is evil, and I am a force of the law. Me. Okay, it was just an offer. I have no clue what led to this weird outburst and this hate of money lending. Maybe some weird anti-Semitic stereotypes? No idea. Monk. So we're splitting it up evenly. I want to save up for some magic items that the wizard has for sale. DM. All right. Anything else you guys want to do while you're in town? At this point, while Sorcerer Monk and I do some shopping, Aladdin the Paladin is passing multiple notes to the DM. DM. Oh, you sure about this? I mean, you're supposed to be lawful good, right? Aladdin the Paladin. Yes, it is in the service of good. DM while rolling his eyes visibly. All right. Once y'all meet up again at the market, you notice Aladdin appearing from a dark side alley parting ways with a sleazy-looking half-orc. Monk. What did you do with that half-orc? He looks like a criminal. Aladdin the Paladin. I bought some drugs. Everyone. What? Aladdin the Paladin. Since you won't let me buy my plate armor, I need to find another way to quadruple my gold. Monk. So much for your I am the law tagline. And how do you even plan to resell it for quadruple its value? Aladdin the Paladin. I'll dilute it with sawdust to quadruple the amount and then resell it. Monk. And so much for your I oppose evil tagline as well. Aladdin the Paladin. Shut up, idiot. Every drug addict is evil anyways. So if they die from the diluted drugs, it's still a victory for good. Me. Are you sure this is a good idea? Aladdin the Paladin. If you misers would have just bought me my plate armor, I wouldn't have to do this. So shut up. The game continues, and as does Aladdin with his stupid plan, passing notes once in a while with the DM while we finish up our business in town. We take up our next quest from our new wizard patron and journey towards our new destination. Once we leave town, we get ambushed on the road. DM. The leader of a heavily armed band of thugs shouts at you. How dare you try to intrude on the drug trade in our town? Give us our fair cut or pay with your lives. Aladdin the Paladin. No way, criminals. You will perish in the name of the law. Monk. I'm not going to risk my life for his bullshit. Aladdin the Paladin shouting, My good friends here and I will send you to hell where you belong, evil scum! Me. I guess Aladdin just included us in this fight. So we fought. It was a mess. Monk was taken out during the combat, but DM was lenient. So some of the thugs drug him away instead of outright killing him. Sorcerer Aladdin and I barely defeated the rest of them, but the kidnappers got away. Aladdin the Paladin. We could have easily defeated them if I had proper armor. A while later, we have healed up and tracked the escaped thugs back to their hideout on the outskirts of town. After some tense moments and successful stealth rolls, we managed to break into the criminal hideout. Sorcerer, who was mostly passive up to this point, having his best line of the campaign, Good thing you don't wear plate armor, Aladdin. Otherwise, you probably would have failed your stealth check. <laughs> we managed to take out some of the resting thugs undetected, find the unconscious monk, and finally we all find all of Monk's belongings locked away in a chest. Aladdin the Paladin. Great. We'll all take the money and split it up evenly. With that and my drug profits, I think I can afford the plate armor. Monk doesn't get a share since he didn't help us here. Me. Dude, it's his money. Aladdin the Paladin. We're in a kind of a dungeon and, uh, well, it's loot from a chest. Monk insisted that we split everything we find evenly. 
If you guess that this is the moment when Monk threw his PHB, then you'd be correct. DM. Your loud argument has alerted the rest of the sleeping criminals. You hear their footsteps and shouting coming towards your direction. At this point, we postpone the argument, grab Monk and his stuff, and beat it. Sorcerer and I have disadvantage on athletics because we're carrying Monk and his belongings. But we manage to escape. Aladdin, however, rolls a natural one. DM. Is anyone gonna stop and help him? Me. Nope. Sorcerer. Nope. Aladdin gets surrounded by angry thugs, tries to fight them, curses us in our evilness for leaving him alone, and dies an inglorious death. This time, for some reason, the criminals don't take prisoners. That's the end of the short but horribly annoying life of Aladdin the Paladin, and the end of this horror story. If you guys are interested, let me know, then I'll write up the sequel to this. A sequel, really? But Aladdin the Paladin is dead, isn't he? Yes, he is, but unfortunately, his player rolled up a new character. If you're interested, I can introduce you to his successor. His name? Raladin, brother of Aladdin. I really wish I was kidding right now, but that was his name. But wait, there's a twist! Raladin wasn't a paladin, he was a rogue! So things will probably go better, right? Right? Ah, redemption! That's score one for the paladin players and, well, also score one for the rogue players because Aladdin started as a paladin, but still. I have to say, I'm really enjoying the format of this story. It makes it a lot more fun and easier to read, so take notes, people. As for Aladdin's behavior in part one, let's just say that getting your kidneys prison shanked in the equivalent of a fantasy drug den is probably the best case scenario for him. For inexperienced paladin players, it's really easy to take this I have the moral high ground stance when you're playing a paladin of a lawful good god. Obviously, Aladdin is using this as a bit of a crutch so he can get away with his shenanigans, but it's important to remember that morality is subjective. People who follow their own moral codes are capable of the worst evils and D&D is no different. So what's the moral here? I don't know, man, it's probably to go buy some drugs. Part 2 is titled The Orc Who Refused to Speak Common. If you've already read the short but horribly annoying life of Aladdin the Paladin, you'll easily recognize who these people are. So I'll go ahead and skip the introductions and get straight into the biscuits. The direct sequel to Aladdin's story will follow another time. DM. For this new campaign, we'll start with higher level characters, and it will be an evil campaign, so feel free to play some more monstrous races. Orc. Great, I'll roll up an Orc Barbarian. DM. We'll use Point Boy for character creation. Orc. Point Boy sucks, I'm gonna roll for my stats. DM. Well, if you really want to, you can do that, but you'll roll right here, right in front of everyone, and you are gonna stick with what you get. Are you sure you wanna roll? Orc grunts and rolls his dice. His stats come up below average. Orc, these stats suck! DM, yeah, these are not that great, but also not completely terrible. You can still build a functioning character with these. Orc, this campaign already sucks! Me. Nobody forced you to roll. We fill out our character sheets and DM takes a quick look at them. DM. Orc, you didn't write down the common language. Everyone gets it for free. Orc. My orc doesn't speak filthy human common. DM. But you need it to be able to communicate with people. Nobody in the group speaks orc. Orc. Fine, then I'll take a bissel. DM, that's the language of demons. It won't be much help on the material plane. Orc, sorcerer speaks a bissel, so I can talk to someone. My orc would never speak filthy human languages. DM, sighing. Uh, fine, whatever, your choice. Since everyone starts at a higher level, you can have some magical items as well. Orc. <laughs> Good. I'll focus my build on charge attacks. The game begins. 
Our group of evil characters are on their way to speak to their evil overlord who resides in his evil mansion. DM, you see a tough-looking gnoll guarding the back door of the heavily reinforced mansion. He seems to be on high alert. Orc, let me handle this. Me, are you sure? Orc, I don't understand you. So I walk up to the knoll and I tell him to step aside in Orc. DM, the knoll looks at you completely confused and says something in a language you don't understand. Orc, mm, I tell him to step aside in Abyssal. DM, the knoll doesn't understand a word you say and starts to look increasingly annoyed. Orc. I'll walk back 20 feet, turn around, and I'm gonna charge attack him! Me. Dude, this is literally the first NPC we meet in this campaign, and he's an ally! Orc. I don't understand you. I'll charge him. DM. You tackle the utterly surprised Noel, and together you crash right through the reinforced back door. When you look down, you realize that you have broken the Noel's neck in the crash. Orc. <laughs> Good. We can go inside now. I'm looking for the first person I meet, and I greet them in Orc and Abyssal. You can probably guess by this point how the rest of our meeting went. Sorcerer tried to stop Orc from attacking everyone who didn't understand him, and in response, Orc murdered Sorcerer's pet dog with a charge attack. Later, Orc was overwhelmed and finally killed by her overlord's henchmen. DM. I think one of you has a diamond, so you'd be able to pay for a resurrection spell. Everyone, we resurrect the dog. For his next character, Orc was forced to use Point Buy. Hey guys, guys, you know what would be super funny? If I made a character with the explicit purpose of only acting as an obstacle for everyone else in the party. <laughs> Why aren't you laughing? Look, the whole I don't speak common thing can work, but only in instances that can be easily subverted or are temporary. It would be a cool dynamic where your character learns how to speak basic common through interactions with the party, but even then that scenario ends up with your character eventually learning how to speak common. In this scenario, however, it feels a lot more like an excuse to make a character that exists only to be disruptive. Which, even someone with the mental capacity of an Andrew Tate stan could identify as a dick move. When creating a character, every aspect of them should contribute to the fun factor for the entire group, not just yourself. Well, with two characters dead, I can only imagine that Rallet in the Rogue's life is gonna be snuffed out faster than all of Kanye's brand deals. So, let us proceed, shall we? Part 3 is titled The Equally Short and Annoying Life of Raladin the Non-Paladin. This is a sequel to the short but horribly annoying life of Aladin the Paladin. There's also a spin-off about what happened when Raladin played in an evil campaign. After the tragic death of Aladin the Paladin, we continue our campaign. DM, have you rolled up a new character? Raladin. Yes, here's the sheet. DM takes a brief look at it. DM. Are you serious about the name? Sorcerer gets curious and takes a peek at the sheet. He informs us out of game that the new character is called Raladin. Raladin. I thought a rogue would be a good idea, since nobody was able to disarm the traps in the last dungeon. DM. All right then. The party returns to their wizard patron's tower in order to explain that they failed their quest because a certain paladin drug them into his bad crime drama. They realize that a failed magical experiment has turned the wizard into a talking squirrel. He needs the party to gather new ingredients for a ritual to transform him back into a human. He doesn't mind them failing their previous quest and is willing to pay them some more so that they can hire a replacement for Aladdin. So the party heads out to the next tavern to recruit a new member and we introduce our new player character, Raladin. You see a mysterious hooded figure rise from a dark corner of the room and slowly approach you. I will join you on your quest, if you are willing to pay. Me, since nobody else in here seems to be interested and 
We have a wizard to rescue. I guess you're our only choice, stranger. I'm Duranos of the Silver Forest. Who are you? Raladin. My name is irrelevant to you, but I'll help with your wizard problem. I sigh and roll my eyes, but I want to get back to the adventure, so I grind my teeth. Me. All right, Irrelevant. It's a pleasure to meet you. Monk. Welcome to the party, Irrelevant. You seem very trustworthy. With their new trusted ally, the party leaves town and searches for a ruined labyrinth in a nearby forest. After some dungeon crawling and fighting, the party secures the ingredients they were looking for. Minotaur horn. Monk even finds a nice magical sigh, which counts as a monk weapon. On their trip back to town, the party takes a rest for the night at the banks of a river. Raladin, I'll take first watch. I throw a worried glance towards Monk and Sorcerer. Monk, that's fine, irrelevant. I'll take second. DM, night sets in as everyone but the rogue goes to sleep. Raladin, once everyone's asleep, I sneak towards Monk. Raladin throws his dice. Raladin. That's a 24 on stealth. I use coup de gras to kill him. Monk. I stick my sigh right into his face. DM. Since you prepared for the attack, Monk gets advantage. Raladin. What? I have a 24 on stealth and he's asleep. DM puts a piece of paper on the table. It's a note that Monk passed to him in secret. Monk was so stealthy about it, even Sorcerer and I had no clue that he had done this. DM Monk clearly stated here that he prepares to attack anyone who sneaks up on him with his sigh after he lies down. If you're waiting for exactly this situation, a 24 on stealth means nothing. Raladin suffers heavy damage from Monk's new magical sigh. Raladin, I attack him back. The rest of the party awakens and soon realizes that they're in the middle of PvP combat. Me, what's up with this nonsense? Why are you attacking our friend, Irrelevant? Raladin, my name is Raladin, and I'm here to avenge my brother, Aladdin. Sorcerer, wait, wasn't Aladdin given to a paladin order as a baby by his rhyming bard parents? Raladin, well... Yes, and they gave me away to a thieves' guild to balance out their karma. They were true neutral. Now I tried to reconnect with Aladdin and found out that he was betrayed and left to die by his own party. Me. I don't know who told you this, Raladin, but that's not quite how it happened. Lay down your arms and we can talk about this. Raladin. I attack. The already heavily injured Raladin is quickly killed by a very satisfied monk. Raladin, you wouldn't have won without metagaming, you jerk. Monk, nah, dude, I wasn't metagaming. Why would my monk with a wisdom of 18 trust a creepy-looking stranger who wouldn't even give him his name? And that shortly after my monk nearly got killed and looted by the last weird psycho stranger he joined up with. It makes total sense for him to be very paranoid. Raladin, bullshit. The rest of the group agrees with Monk, and Raladin's body gets thrown into the river to feed the fish. DM Raladin, please roll up a new character. This time, just to make this clear, you are not allowed to create any more relatives, friends, hired assassins, or any other characters with any connection whatsoever to Aladdin or Raladin. Are we clear on this? So ends the equally short and annoying life of Raladin the non-Paladin. But it's not the end of this campaign's ongoing horror story, oh no. Please let me know if you're interested in the last and final part of this RPG nightmare. Feel free to take a guess about what will happen in Act 3. A. Raladin accepts the DM's ruling and creates a new character who doesn't try to harm or kill any other party members. B. Raladin continues on his horrible quest to avenge Aladdin and Raladin. C. Raladin somehow manages to do both of the above at the same time. For anyone who wonders why we continue to play with Raladin, I just want to give some details. We were a close-knit group of teenagers from the same neighborhood who hung out together all the time. We didn't feel like it was an option to kick out Raladin from our game if we didn't want to kick him out of our friend group altogether. And out of game, he was a fun person and a good friend. 
And I also want to empathize that I'm only sharing the really shitty things he did. 85% of the time, we just had fun games with him and he acted like a normal player. It was just when he was in his mood that things like these horror stories happened. Nowadays, as an adult, I wouldn't want to play with him or people like him anymore. But back then, things were just different for us. Just like that, another corpse is pruned from the fetid husk that is the Aladdin family tree. That last paragraph really brings up a good point here. We're viewing these RPG horror stories in a vacuum. Yeah, it's super easy to look at the actions of Aladdin or other that guys and go, wow, what a horrible dickhead with zero redeeming qualities. When in reality, that's not really the case. I mean, yeah, he's disruptive, rude, and inconsiderate, but like OP said, that's really only the worst of him. If someone sat down at their computer and wrote down only your worst moments, you'd be looking pretty bad too. Are there some genuinely insufferable people who play RPGs? Well, yeah. But there's also genuinely terrible people who work at Build-A-Bear, what's your point? What I'm trying to say is you gotta take a step back from these stories every once in a while and not let them influence your perspective on the hobby as a whole. Yeah, it's fun to point and laugh, but it's probably better that we should be focusing on the laughing instead of the pointing, know what I mean? The last thing we want to do is turn YouTube and Reddit into Twitter. More than they already have. Our final part is titled, Aladdin the Paladin Takes Revenge and Kills Our Campaign. This is the final part of the ongoing horror story about Aladdin the Paladin and his extremely silly and annoying revenge plot. Unfortunately, it won't have a happy ending, unless you're Aladdin, and if you're reading this, you are a massive jerk in this game and you know it. After the tragic deaths of both Aladdin the Paladin and his long-lost brother Raladin the Rogue, our campaign continues. Raladin seems to have given up on his silly quest for revenge and rolls up a new character, who's pretty much a standard human fighter. No weird name and no particularly weird behavior this time. It probably helps that he's allowed to start with plate armor since we're higher level now. The new fighter mostly just sticks to hacking and slashing and doesn't cause any issues. A couple of sessions go by and we're all having fun. The earlier horror stories are soon forgotten and we even plan to spend the whole weekend just playing D&D. Sorcerer. Our old friend Cameo called me earlier today and he told me that he'll be back in town for a couple of days. DM. That's awesome. We haven't seen him for over a year. Let's ask him if he wants to guest star in our campaign. Everyone, let's do it. Some hours pass and our old friend Cameo shows up at the house. Cameo. I am looking forward to playing D&D again, but I guess I'll need to roll up a new character for this. I don't even remember all of the rules. Me. Don't worry. We wanted to cook and eat something first anyway. We've got plenty of time to roll up a character for you. DM. The party could really use a dedicated healer at this point, so a cleric would be a good option. But you can pick whatever you want to, of course. Cameo. Cleric sounds fun to me, let's do it. Fighter. Well, you guys go cook and I'll help Cameo fill out his character sheet. Most of the party heads up to the kitchen. Cameo and Fighter stay in the basement to roll up a new cleric. Yes, we really did play in a basement, like the true nerds we were. A while later, we're all stuffed and get back together to the basement to continue our campaign. DM. We ended our last session in the middle of a vast underground fortress, built by the dwarves of a forgotten age. Ever since its fall, it's been overrun by a species of insect-like lesser demons from the abyss. It might be a little tricky to introduce your character at this desolate place, Cameo. Maybe he's been taken prisoner by some of the demons who plan to use him as a sacrifice. Cameo. I rolled up a lawful good human cleric of Heronius. Fighter. Maybe he was sent to the Forgotten Fortress by a vision from his god, who thought that there was an important mission for him to achieve there. Cameo. Yes, that fits perfectly. DM. Fine by me. Let's start the adventure. The game begins and our party of adventurers stumble into an armored stranger in the underground fortress. Since he's a cleric of a lawful good deity, he seems very trustworthy. 
So we join forces and continue to clear the ruins of the demonic infestation. DM clearly enjoys the fact that we're having an additional party member and a healer, so he really amps up the combat encounters. In an old dwarven workshop, the demons have awoken some ancient constructs who, of course, try to kill the intruders. It's a really tough fight. Monk. Damn, these things really hit hard. I could use some healing over here. Fighter. Don't worry, Monk. We have a cleric with us. Even if you go down, it's not a big deal. Cameo. I cast Cure Wounds on Fighter. He is closer to my position than the Monk. DM. Ouch, Monk. The other construct swings its rusty saw blade at you. It's a critical hit. DM rolls his dice, and the already injured Monk goes down. But luckily, we manage to pulverize the remaining constructs in the following round of combat. Monk. Can I please get some healing now? I'm like two rounds away from dying. Cameo. I walk up to Monk and kneel over his unconscious body. Then I use coup de gras to kill him. Everyone. What? Cameo. I am a cleric of Heronius, the Arch Paladin. I was sent here by one of my gods to avenge the death of one of his servants. He was betrayed and left to die by you evil cowards. Other than the fighter, of course, who was not a member of your party, so he's cool. I don't have any trouble with him. Everyone face palms. Fighter and Cameo start laughing their asses off maniacally. DM. That's it. We're ending this here. I'm done with this shit. We spend the rest of the weekend playing Warhammer Fantasy Battle instead. Fighter slash Raladin and Cameo slash Cleric feel super smug that they have just pulled off the heist of the Mona Lisa. We try to shut them down by crushing their empire army. We never continued this particular D&D campaign but we started a new one instead. Any type of PvP was strictly banned from now on, and we played no more games worthy of this subreddit. Growing maturity probably helped us as well. It's a bittersweet ending, I guess, for this RPG horror story. End of story. Aw, oh, man. See, this whole story was just fun. Sure, Aladdin ended up destroying the campaign with his foolishness, but it sounds like everything worked out in the end for everyone involved. I really enjoyed how goofy this story was. From the memorable moments like reviving the dog instead of Aladdin, or the fact that all of his characters were just different versions of the suffix Aladdin, I just found myself being pretty entertained throughout. The whole RPG horror story side of YouTube has expanded quite a bit since the days where there was only the big boys like Crit Crab and all things D&D. As stupid as it sounds, I'm actually starting to see different subgenres pop up in the subreddit based on how OPs choose to write their stories. If stories like the grimy saga are on par with horror films like Friday the 13th or Halloween, I'd put this one somewhere between Scream and Shaun of the Dead. Huh. It's a rare thing that we're ending on such a positive note. Uh, ooh, convenient video transition, ooh. All right, let's cut the crap and take a look at this week's Gallery of the Drake. This week's fan art comes from viewer Iro Halen, AKA Halen Room. And okay, I'm not even gonna beat around the bush on this one, holy f This thing is a freaking masterpiece. Okay, for those of you who remember, Halen Rune is the person who made this piece a while back. So I sent him an email saying that I really liked it, and if he had time to do another, I would gladly turn it into some merch or something, and oh my god! This dude did not disappoint. So, yeah, be on the lookout for the Den of the Drake Sistine Chapel poster. Uh, no idea when. Ah, uh, what a glorious tale of cringe. Larry, my noble serf, I require another! Right away, your holiness. Wait, Drake, help, I don't know how to fly! Larry, no! Whoa! Larry! Thank you again, Halen Rune, for submitting your art. If you'd like to see your fan art featured in Gallery of the Drake, be sure to send it to the email in my About section. Fan art is my favorite part of doing YouTube, and it means the world to me that I can inspire artists like you to create artwork like this. With the story over and artwork displayed, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. 
If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you feel like supporting the channel further, my Patreon and merchandise links are in the description. I would like to thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you next time in the Den of the Drake.